Hey everyone, my name is Shay, and today I'm going to show you how to use Python to process data from a public API, and then finally we're going to get that data loaded into Tableau. Uh, now if any of those words were very confusing to you, don't worry, I promise we will cover them all as we move forward. So first, this is our finished code. This is what we're going to end up with at the end of this video. Um, this is all hosted on my GitHub. If you want to go and check that out and dive in, feel free to. I will post a link in the description below. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to delete this file. Yeah, I delete that thing permanently. Ooh, sorry if that was loud. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. All right, and we're going to create a new file called nfl.py. All right, so let's see, let's get started. I like sports and maybe I want to create some sort of visualization about sports. So the first thing I need is some data, and the way I will be getting that data is through an API. Now an API is an application programming interface, and there's a lot of videos about APIs and you can read about it, but really all we need to know is that an API lets us get data. Okay, pretty simple. So where would I go about getting an API? Google. So there's a really good uh, GitHub for free public APIs right here. And the very first link here will show us a long list of APIs that we can use. Now there's some really cool ones on here. Um, you're free to look around. Some of them require an authentication key. We won't be using one for our sake. Uh, but I've already picked one out for us, and it's going to be NFL arrest data. You can see it does not require an authentication key. So when we land here, we see that uh, all endpoints return NFL arrest data in JSON format. Now JSON is JavaScript object notation. And it's just a way of, you know, showing data and it's really cool, it's really easy to interact with, and very useful. Okay, let's keep reading here. Uh, here's our base AP or our base URL. This will be really helpful in a little bit. So I'm going to make a note of that. If you've never worked with an API before, it's really just a URL, uh, but then you change it up a little bit and manipulate it to get back the data that you want. So we can see here additional parameters should be appended using this kind of format question mark and then the parameter equals some value. Alright, so let's just the first one here, top crimes in NFL. Let's look at an example. Okay, so this is what JSON looks like. And that's cool. So we have the let's see if you can see that. We have like the categories like a DUI and there are 224 arrests. Right, drugs, 109. All right, pretty neat. Uh, for our sake, I've already picked one out for us, and that will be this one, which is the top teams with the most arrests in the NFL. And you see, all we need to add is this team at the end, right? So nflrest.com slash api slash v1 slash team. Okay, beautiful. So if I copy this, I'm going to go over here to my Python file now. And if you don't have Python installed, uh, probably a good time to go and do that. There's a lot of videos out there showing you how to do that. I'll link to one of my favorite ones below. Uh, by the way, the editor I'm using is called Visual Studio Code. There are tons of editors out there like Sublime Text, there's Notepad. I think you can actually edit from the command line, a PyCharm. But for my sake, I like VS Code and I'll link to another video showing you how to set this up. Okay, but right now we're in our Python file and we have our URL. Now this should be a string, so I'm going to put it in quotations. You see it changes colors. And then I'm going to assign this to a variable called URL. Okay, now we need to tell Python to go out and actually search the web, get this URL, and then return us the value. So in order to do that, we're going to import this library called URL lib dot request. Now there might be a better way to do this, but this comes with the Python standard library. So as soon as you have Python installed, you have this. Uh, there's other ways to add on additional like libraries, 
but it's a little more complicated not really but for right now we're going to use the standard library all right beautiful so now let's actually go out and get this url so i'm going to set another variable let's call it f equals url lib dot request dot url open and then we're going to pass in this url we just created and then i'm going to print f and see what i got back so save this now in Visual Studio Code, this might be hard for you to see, but I'm just going to right click on the folder I'm working in and copy path. And now I'm going to open up my command prompt and make this full screen for you. And then CD for change directory and then control V. And I'm just going to go into that path, right? So this is where my Python file is held. If I type in dir for directory, you will see we have nfl.py. To run this, I just type in python nfl.py, and yeah, there we go. You see that we printed out that f, and we're getting back this object, right? We actually made a connection to the server, and it gave us back something. But we don't have any data yet, so what I need to do is now create another variable called data, or really anything, and set that equal to f, right, that object, and then we're going to read it, and then we're going to decode it. And we're going to decode it using UTF-8, just a way to encode files, make them smaller. Um, and now if we print data, and then below that we're going to print print data um, one. Cool. So what we just did here, we're going to print that data. We're going to see what we got back, and then we're going to print the second index of data. All indices in Python start at zero, so one is actually the second index of that data. And I'll show you why we're doing that in a second. Let's run this. Okay, cool. So up here is what we just returned. This is our data, and it's really convoluted, kind of hard to read, uh, but it's kind of in JSON format, but not, not perfect yet. And the reason why I printed that first indice, or that second indice, notice right here, uh, this is actually printed down here. So I tried to print that like second indice and it only gave me back this curly bracket. And that's because this data is just like a string. So if I print type of data, I'm going to probably get back a string. I don't know for sure, but I think I will. Yeah, it's a string, right? So cool. So I need to get this into JSON format. So the way I do that is I do read file or just any variable equals json dot loads data now json is actually another library that we're going to import import json beautiful now when i print read file and then i want to print read file zero remember indices start at zero we're going to get this so this looks a little bit more manageable. This is now a JSON file or a JSON, I guess, object. And right here is the very first indice. Right, this looks like a table. We have our, our header, our team, equals Minnesota. The preferred name is there are the Vikings, right? So on and so forth. So now we can do something with this. Really cool. Um, let me see. Yeah, nice. Okay. All right, now I need to get that data loaded into a file. So I'm going to use this with operator here, with open. And we're going to open up our file. So you see open file. And let's call our file, I don't know, arrest.csv. Now CSV, pretty simple. You've probably seen these before. It's what Excel uses. Just comma separated values. All right, this is necessary to getting it into Tableau. All right, so with OpenCSV, and we want to put a W here because we want to write into the CSV file. If we wanted to just read it, then we'd put an R. And there's some other ones you can look into, but right now we're just going to use a W for write. And then we're going to call that as arrest data. Cool, pretty easy. So we're opening up this CSV file that we we're creating it really, and we're going to write some stuff into it. And to reference it, we're calling it arrest data. Okay. Now, 
we need to import one more library and this is going to be called CSV and this just allows us to write in two CSV files so let's give it a variable name CSV writer equals CSV dot writer and then the CSV name which is arrest data okay cool so when we run this we should have uh, maybe some sort of CSV file let's try it let's run it should not print out anything but now over here you see that we have this CSV file and it's empty right now okay so now to actually get all the data into that CSV file we're gonna use a little trick here we're gonna say count equals zero and then for every single line or every single result or row in that read file so for result and read file if count equals zero so if we're just starting out um, then we want to declare our header and we're going to set that equal to result dot keys now let me tell you what I just did there let me print result dot keys and then finally I'm going to uh, add one to our account okay so that was a little that was kind of a lot right there but really uh, for every single result in our read file so that long list of data up here so for this one for the one before that so on and so forth uh, if the count equals zero which it does right now then I'm going to set this variable called header equal to result dot keys and now I'm going to print result dot keys and show you what that looks like so result dot keys is just a dictionary and it gives us the, the values or really the keys here of our table so this is going to be the very top row of our table. So team, team preferred name, team name, team city, right? It's just the structure of the rest of our data. Okay, cool. So let's get rid of this. And now we're going to do CSV writer dot write row. Remember CSV writer is this variable name we declared up here. And we're going to write in our header. Okay, cool. Okay, so if count equals zero, go and get the header and then write it to the CSV file. All right, otherwise, uh, we're just gonna write the row. So CSV writer dot write row, and then result, instead of keys, we're gonna do dot values. Now you can kind of imagine what this brings back. Um, it's just the values, right? Pretty simple. Okay, so when we run this now, nothing should happen over here, but now in our CSV file, we have uh, pretty good looking data, right? We have our headers up here. It declares the structure of our table. And then we have each individual row, which is another data point. Very neat. Uh, where am I at? Okay. Now, one thing I need to go back and talk about are those parameter values we saw. So remember, when we do these, we can also specify parameters. Uh, and how you do that, I'm going to show you really quick. Pretty simple. At the end of this URL, so check this out, we have 32 teams right now. Um, what we can do here is just do question mark, which tells you know the internet that we're about to start adding a parameter in. And then we're gonna say limit whatever it gave us equals 10. So we went with the first 10 teams, and I, I only want data that starts from 2010, you know, the first day January. So now when I run this, okay, cool, it worked. Our CSV file is a lot smaller and only has the first 10 results. So that's how you manipulate the data that comes back to you from that request. But for our sake, we're going to not use any of those. All right, let's run this one more time. Beautiful. All right, so now you may have noticed that we have this new line or this like empty space in between each line of our CSV file. So to get rid of that down here when we opened up and created it, let's specify new line we see right here, new line. New line equals nothing, right? Just one open parenthesis or one open quote and an end quote. Okay, save that, run it one more time. Beautiful, now we have some good looking data, 32 teams. Uh, no spaces looks great. Okay, now how do we get this into Tableau? Uh, the first thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to get the directory that we're in. So copy path. Now open up Tableau. If you don't have Tableau, um, there's a way to get it for free. And I'll just link that down in the description below. It's a little bit, it doesn't have all the features, but it has pretty much everything you need. So I'm already in that directory. If I wasn't, uh, sorry, let me back up a second. I want to connect to a file. And I want to connect to that CSV file, which I don't see here. So I'm going to hit more. And then connect right here. Beautiful. Right here. Here's my CSV file. Let's open it up. And boom, this is our data. It's the exact data we had uh, in that CSV file. And if I want to do a simple like visualization, let's just add team to rows and maybe the arrest count to the columns. Let's order it as ascending or rather descending. And maybe add like the conference to color. So NFC, AFC, and cool. Now we have some data and we can mess around with it. All right, guys. Well, that brings us to the conclusion. I hope you you know learned something today. This came from a comment that I saw on Reddit, and I wanted to reply to that and show them how to do it. Um, if you want me to go more in detail, or if you have any specific questions, just leave them down below. And yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and have a great day.